Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And, uh, yes, we are bumping it up a whole pile of notches here with some of the most amazing people, I believe. And, of course, we have them on regularly. Freeman, of course, if you want to understand that the world is run by those who understand numerology, hyperdimensional occultic uh, phenomena, the very nature of the spiritual world ruling over the physical world, and that's why, whether it's good or evil, it's being used to control our world. And the fact is that the globalists that run our world are uh, experts in this uh, technology, if you want to call it, and they use it for evil. They use it for control, and they uh, are masters of it. And it's far beyond those things that look to their face necessarily as evil, like uh, Satanists, that Luciferians, in fact, they use both the, quote, what appears to be positive and negative aspects of this force and power to control the planet and all the rest of the so-called profane. And we're going to make you less profane if you listen up and realize that uh, much of this is being used against you, that your own behavior is being controlled by dialectics. Uh, And one of those people that has an amazing talent at looking at all these facts and finding things in the uh, pattern recognition of the spiritual realm and bringing it into the physical is Freeman. Freeman, welcome back. Hey, good to be here. Well, I want you to do, I, sometimes I'll do a little rant, and I'm getting, as I say, imposed by the power of the Most High, but I, I really feel it's time for you to do a little rant on the stuff you discovered today about uh, their plan on building a temple in Jerusalem and about these other things about NASA. Uh, I'm just going to sit back and maybe uh, chuckle here and there and say, oh, my gosh, uh, tell us. I'm sending you the link as we speak. It is on the Space War News under freemantv.com, so if anyone wants to catch up with anything that we're talking about today, go to freemantv.com, click on the Space War News banner. It's all there. But one headline that you will see there is Lucifer announces uh, he's building the third temple in Jerusalem. Whoa. Now, now just a uh, second now. Back up. Roll back. <laughs> Lucifer? You're talking about that he's called the title of Lucifer, and, and what is his real name? What is his name that we think of in our world? We are talking about Supreme David Rockefeller. Right. Supreme David Rockefeller, who is now the head of the Rockefeller uh, Foundation family empire, which is a, uh, if you want to call it a dynastic empire, uh, is now calling for the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. I, I had stepped away from Supreme because, you know, this is a character that has claimed massive strength, massive power. It says that uh, the story of Iron Man is based on him, that he has space technology in his chest. And he is being brought forth by this third prophet that they call, his name is Michael Prescott. Right. Uh, Supreme admits that he is Marduk, he is Ra, he is Lucifer. This is his character. This is You can go check it out on his own uh, business sites and, and MySpace or whatever. Uh, Supreme David Rockefeller has not been shy about saying who he is and that even uh, the Luciferian agents, they all know who he is, the, the, the New World Order. And so now, yes, and you know, honestly, I, I'd skipped over this cat for a Wait, while. Because are you referring to the uh, Senator David Rockefeller? No, Supreme David Rockefeller. You're right. I, figured, I want people to understand the difference. And who, what's the difference between Supreme David Rockefeller? Who is this individual? Supreme David Rockefeller just uh, publicly is the uh, director of Kinty Holdings, uh-huh. which is basically you know a trades uh, international trading corporation. And, but then publicly boasts to be Lucifer, Marduk, Ra, all reincarnated. Which, right. So, you know, really in other words, a, a long office story one more time, because right. he doesn't only claim this. He says that much of the effects that we're going to be seeing in the world of the EMP and super weapon, uh, weather weapon, uh, weather type weapons are going to be, you know, be in his hands and being used against the world to make everyone follow him. And in honor of all of this, he announced, and the reason I bring it up is because it was announced on CNNMoney.com. You know, so this is not just... Yes, it's not, it's, not a minor, it's not a minor thing on a back page of the Chicago uh, newspaper. It yeah, is, you're not finding this uh, in the National Enquirer. This is CNN. Right. Uh, Kinsey yeah. Mining Limited announces Supreme David Rockefeller in the rebuilding of the Third Jewish Temple right. in Jerusalem. Uh, you can find it under the Temple Now Project. Now, so, uh, you know, I want to just do a little sidestep for a minute and have you kind of fill in some more details. The Western world, including America, was founded on Druidic occultic science. Uh, Druidic science is, uh, occultic science is embedded deeply into even uh, so-called the uh, Roman Catholic Church, the, uh, the, the Talmudic Jewish, the Islam, all the religions of the world 
have, you know, you know, in the Western culture we call it Druidic, but it's very similar on the Eastern side that where they appear, at least on the surface, more mystical. The same occultic technology at the higher levels is used in all these countries, which is why when the German Thule Society, which are the Gellenschaft Thule, could easily kind of understand the symbology of the black dragon shoguns of of uh, Japan. I mean, that's the part I forgot to mention for you, Doctor Deagle, is yeah. that this is the Thule Society, right? Uh, openly announced through Supreme and his supposed third prophet, uh, Michael Prescott, is that they are the Thule Society. They, they, that's exactly who they say they are. Right, and when of course the Thule Gallenschaft were the basis for the occult technology to use uh, channeling. Uh, to these transdimensional entities to get the occultic science for anti-gravitational space technology, the basis for the V-2 rocket system, genetic upgrading to create super uh, soldiers, etc., all started with the Thule. It's interesting. It's the same individuals who are now making these announcements, isn't it? It is amazing, and they are very open about it. I think that their website is lucifer.com. I'll have to double-check on it's that. Like, but you can <laughs> Lucifer, like Lucifer's Trust, which is interesting. Uh, uh, the uh, Alice Bailey and all these others would be very proud of them from their from their purchase within the realm of, of Satan. Yes, and let me just throw out a few Luciferian connections for people so that you see, like, the, the film company, I've, I've gone over this, but the film company that, that put out Arnold Schwarzenegger with the Six Day and Cloning, they show you a Lucifer, a friction match as their opening scene. If we start to realize that our corporations are all encoded with these occult symbols, so when you see a shell and you see a pentagram of, of Texaco and shell, uh, you must realize these are symbols of Venus, and Venus is coded Lucifer. Look Lucifer up in the dictionary, you'll see Venus. So your gas companies are coded to Venus, to Lucifer. Uh, when we get to Lockheed Martin and their logo, which is a broken pentagram, and that is a very dark ritual magic when you start to get into understanding ge- the geometry and when you break the geometry. It's also a coded compass and square, but like uh, Lockheed Martin, uh, Orbital, and uh, SpaceX will be the and Boeing, uh, the the new space program that we will be moving into now that Obama has officially ended NASA on the anniversary of the Columbia disaster. Isn't that because amazing Columbia timing? Goes back to the goddess Venus and Lucifer, and yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you make some amazing connections, and the neat thing is you made the connection between the spiritual realm. Please continue, because this is a, as I say, this is your rant. This is important that people grasp these connections, because if they don't see the symbology in all the corporations. And Obama literally announcing the end of NASA on the anniversary of Columbia? I mean, this is weird. It is. And, and then of course, this is no surprise to me. This is something that I have been covering uh, since Obama went into office. This is why I made the movie Obama Cloning in the Coming Space War. Uh, I've been telling you about this for a year now. Uh, this is the very plan that's been enacted. So when we start to think about, okay, why did we bomb the moon? Why did America bomb the moon? We had already, you know, India had launched and found water on the moon with their Chandrayaan-1. Uh, China had launched and crashed their probe into the moon with the Selene probe. And that was uh, almost, well, it was almost two weeks before we even launched our probe to go crash into the moon when China crashed their probe into the moon. Uh, we had the, the Jap- Japanese Kyuga orbiters sort of circling the moon, but yet, Two years later, we still had to launch the LRO. Okay, these are multi, multi million dollars. It cost seventy nine million dollars to to crash the probe into the moon, when it had already been done by India. It had already been done by China, uh, Japan, and so we have to start asking the question of you know what are they trying to get us to believe with NASA because they have been announcing the deficit and crash and burn of NASA and the moon program since before we launched an or a probe to find a moon base, right? That was their, their admission, saying we we crashed this uh, rocket into the moon so that we could determine whether we could put a base there. Yeah, sure. But they have been there since the early 1960s. And they want to lie to the public about this because it's part of their game. Well, it gets deeper. Yeah, I know, much deeper. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report. Now, how does this all tie together? Uh, Friedman, please continue. Okay, so what we're looking at, first of all, is that we got to understand that NASA's been planning for this, that the, the SpaceX program has been underway and concurrent through the decline of NASA. So it's been uh, NASA astronauts have already been interacting with the Dragon spacecraft. Now, let's just realize they're the Dragon uh, 
spacecraft were launched on a Falcon, which is Horus, using the Merlin engine. So let's just, you know, let's know who these guys are. Oh, my are. gosh. <laughs> we're dealing literally with people that are using no different terminology than Mr. D in the court of Queen Victoria I. Uh, yeah, exactly. And this this does travel all from the, you know, we're talking about channeling entities like D did through the Enochian magic. Uh, very much, we're, we're on the same plane, and of course, Enoch was one of the first and only people to leave the planet, according to the Bible. Right. Uh, so, as we start to look into the picture, and we realize that NASA's already been interacting with the Dragon, uh, they already launched the UHF communications for Dragon on the last Atlantis launch, and I actually thought maybe they would use that to bring out SpaceX to the public, and, and the Dragon would save the Atlanteans, but that didn't happen. Uh, they were testing the Ares Rocky before Halloween. They got the communications up by September. The astronauts were interacting with Dragon. They knew about this thing. At the same time, they're telling us about Apophis. And just to be clear on Apophis, NASA says, uh, you know, they, first it was 2029 on Friday the 13th, then 2036, and now they've said, no, it's not going to hit on 2036, maybe 2068. But at the same time, Russia's announcing, hey, we've got to go and stop this killer asteroid Apophis. So if you're looking at NASA data or you're looking at Russian data, uh, Russia's saying it's hitting NASA, saying no way. Uh, the curious with having Akhenaten in office, fighting Apophis, being the first serpent deity of destruction in Akhenaten's religion. Yeah, isn't that amazing? I mean, the symbology just blows you away. And then when we look at him, he's walking around Cairo before he did his speech last year. And he literally says, look at that. And he says, look at the pictures of, of uh, Akhenaten. And it literally looks identical. I mean, you look at him, you said the bone structure of his face and everything's like, whoa. I don't know if I'm supposed to say this or not, but I have it from an inside source that Obama did attempt to get his picture taken with the Akhenaten bust. And it was Rahm Emanuel that stepped up and shook his finger in his face and, and, and said, no, you, you're taking your picture with King Tut. Because they wanted to confuse this issue. And actually, you can just find out just now, they just announced that they're putting in a $5 million DNA lab in the Egyptian museum to determine whether or not King Tut is the son of Akhenaten. So they're back to the DNA in, in, in <laughs> ancient Egypt once again. Well, uh, you can go look into Zahi Awas on that. Well, let, you know, let, let's say that we propose that he isn't, quote, a clone. The fact is, if you look at the bloodlines of his father, uh, in, uh, in, it was coming from uh, Kenya. The bloodline actually is the pharaonic bloodline that uh, passed through the, because uh, his father was, was Muslim, right? Uh, and if you actually look at the bloodlines, it's very possible that he actually could have uh, Egyptian bloodline uh, in him. Uh, he's not just, quote, black African. He's actually black African Arab is what he is. And an Atlantean specialist, uh, one that studies Atlantis, uh, 